Welcome to the Nature Just Got Real Sensational Summer Minicast Series for Kids. Let's get started. Hello, Planeteers. Welcome to the new Summer Minicast Series, Episode 6. I'm your host, Captain Jack Sparrow Carr, and if you're watching this on video, you get to see a talking dog, which is not something you see every day, right? This episode is part of the Sensational Summer Series minicasts, and these are short little shows, but pretty cool because they're supposed to get you outside and exploring, so don't forget to download the activity that goes with this episode. There's a new episode released every Monday through the end of August, so watch for those. KB will be hosting the next episode, so be sure to watch for that. Today we are talking about ladybugs, why they are awesome, where to find them, and how to identify what species live near you. Let's get right into today's mini cast. Ladybugs have a couple other names that they're known by. They are also called ladybirds and lady beetles. The first thing you should know is that not all ladybugs are girls, and that all boy ones are also called ladybugs. They got their name because farmers in Europe prayed to the Virgin Mary when insects were eating their crops. After ladybugs came and wiped out the insects, the farmers named them Beetles of Our Lady. This was shortened to Lady Beetle and then Ladybug. The invading pests might have been called aphids because these are a ladybug's favorite food. They eat other insects too, but aphids are their favorite. One ladybug can eat up to 5,000 insects in its lifetime. And that lifetime is up to two to three years in the wild. It's pretty good for a bug. There are about 5,000 different ladybug species in the world. They come in a lot of different colors and patterns, but the most familiar one here in North America is the seven-spotted ladybug. Seven-spotted ladybugs are red or orange with three spots on each side and one in the middle. They have a black head with white patches on either side. Ladybugs are colorful for a reason. Their markings tell predators, eat something else, I taste terrible. When threatened, the bugs will shoot an oily, foul-tasting fluid from their knees. Gross! Don't scare one. They may also play dead, so if you see a dead ladybug, is it really dead? Hmm, something to think about. Birds are ladybugs' main predators, but they also get eaten by frogs, wasps, spiders, and dragonflies. Ladybugs lay their eggs in clusters or rows on the underside of a leaf, usually where there are aphids, because who doesn't want a snack as soon as they're born, right? They're called larvae after they hatch, and vary in shape and color based on species. They hatch in just a few days. Seven spotted ladybug larvae are long, black, and spiky looking with orange or yellow spots. Some say they look like tiny alligators. Larvae grow quickly and shed their skin several times. When they reach full size, they attach to a leaf by their tail and a pupa is formed. Within a week or two, the pupa becomes an adult ladybug. Ladybugs live in many different habitats, including grasslands, forests, cities, suburbs, and along rivers. The seven spotted ladybugs are native to Europe, but they were brought to North America in the mid-1900s to control the aphid populations. Makes sense, right? Ladybugs are mostly active from spring until fall. When the weather turns cold, they look for a warm, secluded place to hibernate, such as in rotting logs, under rocks, or even inside houses. Did you know that ladybugs prefer lighter-colored, southwest-facing houses with dark shutters to hibernate in? These hibernating colonies can contain thousands of ladybugs. Most of the house hibernating ladybugs are Asian ladybugs, so if you see any in your home, check the ID chart. They don't do any damage and they will go away when the weather gets warm enough, but some people don't like living with bugs. As a dog, I gotta say I have mixed feelings about it. 
Most people like ladybugs because they're cute and pretty harmless to humans. In some cultures, ladybugs are considered good luck. I know they make KB smile and go, aww, so that's good luck for me. More treats if she's in a good mood, you know what I mean? Thanks, ladybugs. NASA even sent a few ladybugs into space with aphids to see how aphids could jump or escape in zero gravity if they couldn't jump the same way they do on Earth. I don't know how that went, but if any escaped, will we find them on the moon someday? Who knows? So, this week's mission is to pay attention to what kind of ladybugs live in your area. To help you out with that, there's a ladybug ID chart you can download, as well as a handy guide on how to attract ladybugs to your yard. The link for that will be in the show notes. That's it for this episode. Tune in next week when KB talks about the ocean and its layers and gives you a cool ocean layer project you can do at home. Go out there and have a very ladylike adventure, even when they're boys, in your neighborhood. That wraps up this mini cast for today. Thank you to our sponsor, Weird and Wacky Planet. Don't forget to download your play sheets and activities for this episode. See you next Monday for the next installment in the Sensational Summer Series Minicast. Thank you for listening.